Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the menstruation cycle, different hormonal and changes in uterus and ovary that goes in menstruation cycle. A lot of people in college and high school find menstruation cycle difficult, but I try to explain it in as simple terms as possible. So let's get started. Before we jump into the menstruation cycle, let's first learn a little bit different thing so um, from our hypothalamus a hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone gets released and this hormone stimulates the anterior pituitary gland to release follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone and the FSS and LS combined they influence the follicular development in the ovary so this is picture of our ovary and this was the development of one follicle so due to the effect of FSS and LS this one ovary one follicle keeps developing and once it reaches the maturation it releases the egg and after the egg is released this changes into something called corpus luteum that will come afterwards and these follicles they primarily secrete estrogen hormone now sometimes they write oes for estrogen sometimes they just start from est and estrogen and the of the fss and ls the ls harbor helps to maintain this corpus luteum after it's formed and we'll come to this later on too um and estrogen it helps in generation of the endometrium. Endometrium is a layer in the um, the internal layer of the uterus that's made uh, primarily for the preparation of to prepare it to receive baby. That's endometrium, and estrogen helps in regeneration of the endometrium after menstruation happens. And progesterone it helps to maintain the endometrium. It cannot regenerate the endometrium by itself, but it helps to maintain the endometrium. So right now we can think that if the level of estrogen and progesterone is low, then the endometrium would break down because that's their function to maintain the endometrium. And here I have this little cycle that says that gonadotropin releasing hormone, it, um, increasing, it increases the FSS and LH, which in turn um, stimulates the production of estrogen and progesterone and here we have this negative feedback loop after this estrogen and progesterone are produced a lot they actually have a negative impact on the pr production of gonadotropin releasing hormone so they can control their amount um, now these two graphs they sort of show the change in hormones during the menstruation cycle this upper one shows the change in luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone or as this lower one so the change in estrogen and progesterone throughout the cycle and the whole menstruation cycle is divided into four different phases follicular ovulation luteal and menstruation so in this follicular phase the follicles are developing right here so the development of the follicle from here to here would be in the follicular phase and ovulation means the release of egg so from here this follicle would literally break and the egg would be released and this would be the ovulation and luteal phase is the phase where this corpus luteum is active and menstruation is when the endometrium finally breaks down and falls apart so these are the different phases and this graph shows the changes in LS and FSS in the these four phases and this one so the change in estrogen and progesterone in the phases now so let's first start here so the menstruation happened and we said that menstruation happens because there will be low level of estrogen and progesterone um, and due to their low level the endometrium can be maintained which can be seen in this graph and let's start right now here so when the estrogen and progesterone are low, then there's nothing to give this negative feedback. 
so the gonadotropin releasing hormone would uh, be more produced resulting in more production of this FSH and LS and in this graph now we can see the more production of F FSH but not in LS and you may ask like why isn't LS produced more and one reason I can think of is menstruation cycle has to be a lot more complicated than, than just these four hormones and um, I sort of copied this graph from Kaplan MCAT book and um, that's how the book showed it and I just copied it now I don't know for sure if LS is more than FSS in all the stages or they just drew the LS line above the FSS just to make the graph clear but um, the main thing you need to understand is that there will be a spike of FSS and LS in this phase and I'll focus on the important part uh, but you don't need to worry about why this increase and why this doesn't increase um, the main thing is that you don't have you have less estrogen and progesterone and that causes an increased production of FSS and LS in here and um, the more production of FSS and LS uh, leads to the development of follicles and the follicle in turn produce more estrogen which is evident over here so this is our estrogen and we can see that more estrogen is produced and we learned over here that estrogen causes this negative feedback estrogen and progesterone but right at ovulation something different happens um, the negative feedback is actually replaced by positive feedback and this a lot of estrogen it causes this spike in LS and FSS we would expect these to go down due to a lot of estrogen but opposite happens in this case and the spike in LS specifically causes the egg to be released from the the follicle so th you need to know this there would be a spike of FSS and LS in the ovulation phase caused by spike in estrogen and that causes the release of the egg uh, and in this luteal phase uh, the luteinizing hormone is being produced and luteinizing hormone it maintains corpus luteum as we took over here and fo these follicles they produce estrogen primarily but this corpus luteum it produces both estrogen and progesterone so now we can see here this rise in estrogen and progesterone and this you need to know so you can see that in the cycle estrogen sort of spikes two times but progesterone only spikes one time and this high level of estrogen and progesterone they maintain the endometrium now what happens as you go over here is that this high level of estrogen and progesterone cause this negative feedback and we have less FSS and LS and once we have this less FSS once we have less LS there's nothing to maintain this corpus luteum and the corpus luteum breaks down and when the corpus luteum breaks down there will be low estrogen and progesterone and menstruation happens I repeat this the explanation of this graph one more time so menstruation happens there's less estrogen and progesterone and this removes this negative feedback over here and um, GnRH is more produced FSS and LS is more produced that is seen right in this part and this FS increase in FSS and LS it causes the development of the follicle and the development of the follicle causes uh, follicle produces more estrogen and estrogen is supposed to provide negative feedback but something weird happens in this ovulation phase and it causes a spike in LS and FSS and primarily this is spike in LS it causes egg to be released which is called ovulation and after that um, the the ruptured follicle changes to corpus luteum and um, we, we have the LS keeps maintaining the corpus luteum and corpus luteum keeps producing more of this estrogen and progesterone and more estrogen and progesterone maintain the endometrium but um, what happens is um, when they increase after what they give this negative feedback to GnRS and causes reduction in the luteinizing hormone produced and due to this low level of luteinizing the corpus luteum isn't maintained that well and that's why because 
corpus luteum was the one producing the estrogen and progesterone so now we have less estrogen and progesterone then the endometrium layer gets broken um, now I want to talk a little bit more about um, what happens if um, conception happens during this period but the time went out um, so there's part two of this video too please hang by thank you for watching my videos